I just realized I've been muted this whole time, so I kind of feel like an idiot. But, uh, yeah, like I was saying, this up, up here on the top of the map, now that you can hear me, is unutilizable. It can't be used for nothing. Thankfully, I wasn't very far into the stream. Um, this battle's brought to you by Bluecoat and I. We, uh, we took a little bit of time on the initial setup. We were talking a lot. You can see me setting up my lines and forming them. Um, I got my skirms way out in front here. I'm going to push them as a, uh, a screening force. I have light infantry and skirmish mode enabled on them. Um, I'm setting up my first line of defense, my secondary line. Um, I got my howitzers in the rear where this hill prevents them from getting directly fired on by blues cannons but they can still shoot over this brim. Um, this would be my first line of defense is this little hill here. I consider this the secondary line. And then back here in the rear, I consider that kind of the last line of defense, third line. You can see me setting my cannons up. I've got the 11th and the 1st Massachusetts moving into this little section here. Um, yeah, we talked a lot during this initial setup. We laughed a lot. We uh, we were talking about the history of Fort Wagner. Neither of us think Fort Wagner were ever taken by the American armies. So uh, this isn't exactly historically accurate. You know, the the Americans, the the USA, did not defend Fort Wagner. The CSA did. And in our opinion, we don't think the Confederates ever lost Fort Wagner. And you can see his general in the back. We did stick with tournament rules. 18 guns, no general snipes, things along that nature. And you can see him moving his general up now, so when I unlumber all of my cannon, I turn them off fire at will until I see his troops. Now here was my first biggest mistake. I set up a, a line of defense with my 10 pounds, but I put my 18, 1841s right behind them. So, I actually friendly fired this cannon crew quite a bit. Um, but, Bluecoat and I pulled off some absolutely amazing cannon shots. And I just, I have my skirm sitting here. They're on fire at will. Light infantry mode, skirmish mode, all enabled. And that's just kind of my screening force so I can see when they are getting close now. I'm going to get my setup here done. I'm, I pull these men back just a hair so they don't get shot by my own cannons any more than necessarily. Now the first Massachusetts does take some cannon fire from this 1841. That was not the best placement. And um, at this point he doesn't even know I have howitzers. They are pretty well hidden. Um, pretty early on in the battle though he realizes I have this 10 pound parrot battery here. and. We laugh the entire time because if it's not him pulling off just amazing cannon shots into my crew, it's me pulling off amazing shots. This this building here, it just gets battered by his cannon. He is not after my general. He is after these front lines, but some cannon shells stray into this building. Um, my, my general took no damage during this battle. And, um, you know, the balance of power is slightly in my favor, not by a whole hell of a lot, but it is. There's my pullback, so they're lined up with my cannons perfectly. You know, this was, this was an absolutely amazing fun battle. Blue didn't give up. He fought literally till the bitter end. Um, I'm not going to give away what happened because the ending of this video is actually truly remarkable. But uh, it was really, it was really fun playing this with him, and we want to redo this map again with him controlling the fort and me marching up the beach and attacking. Um, I'm going to give him the choice of what side he plays, though, because um, I've been playing the USA side a lot, and uh, I'm not going to say what I'm going to do, but I do have a plan, um, because I plan on sending this YouTube video to Blue. Now, I didn't stream this live. Oh, excuse me, when we played it, I, um, 
I just saved the replay. The last few days we have been plagued with crashes. So it looks like I have got my army fully set up. And at this point, Blue and I are just talking. We're just bullshitting. Um, it starts out pretty quick once it actually gets going. And he and I are just constantly, whoa, whoa, did you see this? Did you see that? Watch this unit, watch that unit. Like, it, it was, from start to finish, great conversation. And we laughed very hard. Oh, and there we go. First contact being made. Now, he does not know my skirms are there at this point in time. And instantly... He's taken massive damage. This was the first point where he's like, Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I had a cannon volley open up, so I turned those off of fire at will because I didn't want him to really see that they were there. But that was the first oh wow factor. And we, me and him just started laughing right then and there because it was already an interesting start. Now, I do believe that unit does return to the battlefield. Okay, so there's his cannons coming into play. Here's more of his skirms. Now, he does know my skirms are there now. So he is he is ready. And he's already um, targeting my cannon crew. Now, his cannons are just out of my range. So I just start targeting his skirms. And as you can see, he's already pulled off some pretty good shots on my cannon. Um, he's already taken out uh, two of the horses and a couple men. But of course, we are going to return that favor just by hammering his skirms. It's kind of nice to be able to watch this replay because now I can be everywhere. So what I want to do is, since I know his army isn't super close, I'm going to push my skirms up and start trying to pop shots at his cannon crew. I already know I'm dealing with his skirms, and my, my cannon are focused on these skirms, trying to break them. As you can see, it wasn't quick enough, because his skirms broke mine quickly. That 69th New York put up a hell of a good fight. Now... Here I am rushing my, my skirms, so I'm going to sacrifice them to try to get these cannons. And I'm directly targeting the cannons, so it makes the firing a little quicker from what I've heard. The only drawback is, is um, both his cannon crews are going to focus these guys down quickly. And um, both of these come back, and I just I keep using them, and yet again they broke. Now, at some point in time here, all of my men decide instead of running back to the fort to their own men to protect them, they start running right into his lines. And then here we go, the first first sight of his army coming in. Now, both my skirms have routed. And here they are. Now they're turning and going back into the Confederate lines. I don't know what they were thinking. That was not the best idea on their part, but we had a good laugh about this as well. A bunch of fucking traitors running to the Confederate side. They don't know whether they want to turn Confederate or surrender, but yeah. Going the wrong way there, boys. So it looks like he's doing his initial setup. He's, he's got a nice setup. He's breaking his men up. He's going to push in waves, which is, which is always a good idea, especially on this map, because... You're just, you're going to get hammered. And I mean, anybody who plays this map and attacks, I don't care who they are, how how good they are, how good their troops are. These, these troops are going to get absolutely hammered right here because it's such a tight, narrow place. You cannot go through these woods. That's all marsh. The top cannot even be accessible. Um, you know, I'd like to see them put a bridge right here so you can full frontal attack the, the fort, but... Either way, it's still a damn good map. I'm not going to complain. If I'd have seen this, though, I probably would have targeted this unit because, um, you know, that's a small little cluster. Of course, at this time, he is just, just a hair out of range. You can see my 
my shots. So that's about where my limit is. And my men are running right into these guys. As you can see, the Confederates are making short work of my retreating troops who were just trying to surrender. They just wanted to surrender. At this point, we were really laughing because it was like, Hey, Blue, is my uh, routing skirmishers going to run right into your cannons and rout them? I mean, they, th this was just a laugh fest from start to finish. You know, he's got some good units here. He's got some good sizing. Like, this is a, a very big unit. It looks like he's, uh... Looks like he was putting his smaller units up front, keeping his more elites in the rear. I'm not certain, though. I'm not familiar with the, uh... With the faction he is playing. I don't mean faction. I know he's playing the Confederates, but... Um, the particular army he's playing, I am not familiar with. And now, you know, now that my skirms are dying, his stuff's starting to get back into um, hidden mode. But, you know, here very shortly, he's going to start pushing his entire army forward. And he actually gets really, really, really close. Well, let's go ahead and go back over to my line of sight here. As you can see, he is already hammering my front line. Uh, and he pulls off some hell of good shots. This 69th New York takes a beating. Along with the 2nd Wisconsin. And then uh, later on in the match, he just... His cannons were very troublesome. And there he is. He's pushing his army forward. And he's doing exactly what I would do. I would have placed these cannons very similar and started pumbling my front line. So, um... Wow, that was an overshoot. I don't know what he was aiming for. Um, it usually takes a couple volleys for these cannons to get honed in. You can see that volley hit really far back. I think he's actually hitting in the front, but there was a couple hits on the building. And again, he is not directly targeting my, my general. It's just sometimes they take a while to hone in. And now my cannon are opening up on his front line. And there was the last of my skirmishers. He, uh, he canistered the shit out of them, as you can see. He dropped them pretty good right here. Which is good, though, for him, because now he's free to target my front lines now with that cannon. But, um, he was a little worried that my skirms might actually... See, that was a good hit. He was a little worried my skirms might do some damage, and I was too, so... Him canistering them down was a good thing. So we're just going to sit right here and watch the um, battery. Now I am blind firing my cannons. Oh, excuse me. And I'm actually getting some pretty damn good hits for blind firing. Even he was like, whoa, whoa. Um, T and I got some hella good cannon volleys. Like, it was quite amazing. Let's see where these cannonballs go. I see him coming in. And at one time, I actually... Ooh, whoa, I just saw that cannonball whip right through. At one point in time, he actually sends men flying. I mean, absolutely flying. Now... I'm watching his general closely, and I'm trying to fire about this distance from his general, because I know at this point his general's at the rear of his army. So it's kind of giving me an idea of where to fire, and I keep targeting the ground because I definitely don't want to hit his general. And here comes my howitzers. Oh, good volley. Good opening volley. I didn't get a lot of men, but I got some. Oh. And, yeah. 
my 1841s opening up and actually doing some some damage. I had to be very careful with this 1841 and try to fire at this distance. So this was more my close range cannon and this one I fired farther so I knew it would clear my troops and my cannons. I actually get some damage on the first mass out of that 1841 and now the bulk of his army is starting to show up so I'm really trying to focus down this front line. Trying to see what he was shooting at. Maybe he was targeting my um, howitzers a bit. But uh, you know, huge shout out to Blue. He he played this battle so very well, and I didn't expect some of the things he did. Well, he's actually a, a very good, very very good opponent. And right now my cannons are just hammering his front line. And he knows it. That's why he is pushing. And he's laughing the whole time. I'm laughing the whole time. He's telling me the hits I'm getting. I'm telling him the hits he's getting. And what you can see, he is blowing holes straight through this 27th Pennsylvania. He's, he's pummeling them. And at one point in time during the game, I'm act I actually turned my cannons off. To give him a little bit of a chance to set up because I did want to actually battle it out with him. And, uh, you know, he laughed about that. He's like, yeah, take pity on me. I see how it is, but um, his, his gameplay is remarkable. I don't know where that shot just went, but that was a overshoot. This building's already taking damage. And I squared up my troops. And uh, at this point, I have my secondary line not firing. I want to save that volley for when he gets super close. That way I can shoot right over my men and into the brain pans of his soldiers. And, um, you know, he's facing some pressure. And he also knew that this cannon was here, so he did not want to push too far because he knew I was going to be canistering him. So, you know, this was actually a really good play. Now, he did expose his flank a little bit, but the way he did it actually was really beneficial on him because if he came too much closer, I had canister ready to go. And he knew it. Um, so he did really well. And the angle that he's at, I don't have a perfect shot with my special shot. He was just out of range for my canister to not be effective. And, you know, he's already back there chevroning his cannons from just obliterating my men. There's my first chevron. Um, his cannons, I can't remember what he brought. He told me, but his cannons were just decimating my lines. Yeah, as you can see, he's popping shots here, he's popping shots there. Second Wisconsin was getting hammered. Now, when he sees me form up here, he actually targets, I believe, both of his cannons and starts ripping through these lines. And he's using round shot. He's not using special like I was. Um, he's using round shot, so that just goes straight through a line. And, I mean, it will shred lines when you do round shot. I am starting to break his troops. I'm having some success. But these troops come back. And um, he puts up a hell of a fight. It's actually really hard for me to hold. As you can see, he just... There's probably 12, 14, 15 some odd guys. He just ripped right through the second main. And that's what he's doing. He's targeting... I should not have clumped up like this. This was a mistake I made because that gave him... A prime target and I mean that is a juicy juicy target to hit but I moved these up because I was deathly afraid he was going to charge right in and crush my line so I had a secondary line set up because I was positive he was just gonna flow troops in here and come up 
this road and into the fort. And if that was the case, I was screwed. My general was going to be in immediate danger. I had no troops over here to stop that advance. I would have had to pull them from over here. And that would have taken them a second to walk over there. There's my second chevron. I'm targeting more over here because I was afraid of that huge bayonet charge. And I was I was really afraid of that. Um, and you know, he's got his line set up really nice. He's even pulling some men over here to give me a target at. Trying to take some pressure off his front. So he has um, he has really good strategy here. Because if he could take a beating over here and take pressure off that front line, that's going to be helpful for him. Let's go back over here <coughs> and just watch a little bit. See if we can get some... Um, man. Yeah, he is pummeling this, this, uh, this unit right here. I mean, just shredding it. And there's nothing I can do. I cannot get to his cannons. So at this point, my men are just going to be getting hammered by his cannons. I cannot reach them. I can't do nothing. And he knows it. We had a nice little laugh about that too because uh, his strategy here was really well. And as you can see, <coughs> I'm pulling these men back to cover. <coughs> and the only reason I'm pulling them back to cover is he was shredding. He was firing straight down that line and just cutting my men to pieces. And there was a ton of bodies here, but they are um, despawning. But he probably had 100, 150 kills right here just from those cannon crews. And, you know, that was the perfect place for him to hit. It really was. And right there, that was a, a hit by my own cannon. I just. I'm firing both my cannon right here, and I just, I hit my own cannon crew pretty hard with that volley. But his front lines are doing extremely well. He's pulled his general right to the front line, which, you know, I told him I was not directly targeting his general, but I was targeting the ground up and down his front line. Um, I wanted to make sure he had a, a warning that... I was targeting that front line, but not his general direct. And as you can see, you know, they're they're hitting pretty good. He's chevroning back here. Here comes more more cannon. Right there was a hell of a good hit. He just ripped a hole right through him. He's peppering the second Wisconsin still. Um, I mean, he just gets an insane amount of chevrons on these cannons. I just popped my third chevron. I've got two back here. My howitzers are starting to chevron out. And I have all of my howitzers trained right here on that front line because I was absolutely terrified that he was going to bayonet. And with his cannons ripping holes in this line... There was nothing I could do to stop it, and I had to pull these troops back to preserve their lives. So, I was absolutely scared shitless that my front line was going to crumble. And as you can see, his units keep coming back. My units, once my units break, they go right into his army. Because everybody wants to break and run to this area. So, at this point... I realized not all of my men were firing the way they should be. So I'm trying to square up a little bit and put as much fire on this front line as I want because my cannons are not doing as well as I would like them to. His cannons are just... Oh! Right there was a good hit. His cannons were doing remarkable. Like right there, he just got a hell of a hit on the 14th. And most of the damage from the 14th came from that cannonball. Because that was a pretty full unit. Now the drawback to the defense like this of Wagner is... 
you you clear a path for a cannonball to go straight down through multiple units, but that's the way I like to play Wagner. So both my cannons now, Chevron and three. I'm getting kills, but it's not as effective as, as I would like it to be. And this move scared me. He moved six regiments very fast. Um, he wasn't running them either. They were just walking, but that literally scared me because I'm starting to flounder over here. And at this point, I was just waiting on him to hey diddle diddle right up the middle. And I figured that's what he was moving these six units for. So I try to quickly react to this. But at the same time, I'm trying to focus on both of my cannons over here targeting his men. Now, this unit comes back, but I do believe I plug it. Yeah, I plug it with the 31st. And actually, I didn't even plug it with the 31st. I moved the 31st up here and pushed the 27th back. But here he is. He's making a big push, and this, this is what I was afraid of. I'm like, man, here comes the bayonet. And now he is really, really chevroning. He got all of these chevrons in a matter of a few minutes, because this one had two and this one had one. And now he is really chevroning. Now he's got three and two. So he was taking massive amounts of my men down with that cannon. Now the only reason I started getting really good kills is because he was a little clumped here for a minute. And I took full advantage of that. I started targeting this clump of soldiers as quick as I could. And he is already moving a vast amount of his army to try to get through this hole. And you know, he and I both knew the 27th had already broken once. So its combat effectiveness was already reduced. And they're already tired. I should have moved this fresh 31st in and let these guys rest up. But at this point, I am trying to get my men to load and fire as quick as possible. Because right now, he can overwhelm me. He's got enough troops right now to crush my entire front line. And I knew it. And if he had a bulk charged me on these four units, they would have mass broke. And I couldn't have really shot because I'd have been hitting my own men and wasting the volleys. Now, I don't know if he knew that, but I sure did. So I was trying to prepare. I have my secondary lines starting to open up. And I mean, he is still just... His cannons are ripping through these men like it's nothing. And you see where he bulked up, that's where I got the majority of my chevrons. That's what, five, six chevrons. Now he's double three stacked back there now. Here comes another volley. Ripping right through my guys again. He was getting hella good shots. As you can see, he got a really good shot right here, too. My howitzers are actually starting to get some good chevrons. Oh, and that was a damn good hit. That was a luck hit. You know, all my chevrons are starting to pop. Um, I think I actually turned my fire at will off here for a little while, if I have not already done that. Alright, I'm going to let this play for a second and go check on my kid. I will be right back with more commentary. Sorry about that. I had to check on the kids, and here he is doing a mass push. And there goes my one cannon crew. Rip cannon crew. Right here, Blue notices my cannon crew broke. 
and you know we had a good laugh about that first thing he said was good now I don't have to worry about them he instantly shifts a regiment over to pepper them down smart smart idea I would have done the exact same thing he that that one cannon crew was giving him issues and with it gone that seriously reduces my chances of holding his men back oh. and I mean as you can see he's only lost very few men um, uh, there's one that broke. I don't believe that one comes back. But, um, that greatly reduces my chances of holding out. So now I have to rely on my 1841, which is going to hit my own men. And there he is. He is targeting the living shit out of them. Best thing he could have done, I would have done the exact same thing. And he's going to run them down. He wants to make sure that these guys do not come back. And I don't blame him. And I was hoping that he wouldn't see that. Or he would have given up after a minute. Because if they would have came back, I was going to march them right into the cannons. But yeah, now they're definitely not coming back. Six of them made it out of the fight. Which blows my mind because he was putting heavy fire down. But yeah, he pulls off here and reforms his line. And with that cannon crew being gone, I had no choice. I had to push these lines up. I activated fire at will on my entire secondary line. Because with that cannon gone... Oh, and look at that hit he just pulled off. That was absolutely beautiful. And this is where he really starts focusing down this line. And that was, that was a good idea, because if he can break this line, he can push. And now there's nothing to prevent him from pushing on this flank, which is exactly what he's doing. He's already breaking my front lines. And uh, I was ready. I had the 18th coming up. They were a fresh unit already. I knew that this regiment was going to break. And uh, I can't blame him. 190 men out of 325 and just cannon shredding. His cannon was absolutely obliterating everything I had. And he is just focusing down my front line. And at this point, all I really have to my advantage is the howitzer. This gun back here just... Its placement is not that good, and the only thing I have to fire at is this unit, otherwise I risk wiping out my front line. So all I can do is try to put down as much musket fire as humanly possible, and it's, it's somewhat working. It really is, but um, losing that cannon really hurt, so kudos to Blue Coat on that. That was a amazing kill. His line's holding superbly. I know he's got some breaking rallying troops, but he is held firm. And let's see, where is his general during this? Right there's his general. I'll tell you what, that is a brave general. He is staring cannon fire in the face and laughing about it. Oh! That cannonball landed right on top and didn't take a single soldier. But here he is. He is stacking his troops, pre pre prepping for this push. And at this point, I just said to hell with it. I instituted a charge. I'm walking them right now, though, because they're already tired. And I'm pulling up these lines to fill in the gap. I'm just trying everything I can. Right there was a huge cannonball rip. Huge cannonball just ripped through the 32nd. Instantly crushing all the morale that they had. And he's already pulling his general over. He's rallying his men. 18th isn't going to be able to hold much.
my howitzers are just shoot. And there he is. He just routed both of those lines, and they were health, healthy, fresh lines, and he just he shredded them. Now, he is starting to diminish in numbers, but that does not mean anything. My men are all pretty tired. You know, active, 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 winded. These guys have been fighting since the very beginning. However, these ones got a little bit of a rest. But yeah, he is just still hammering my men. There was another damn good cannonball. Two men got back up from that one. And he's already crumbling a third infantry unit. Oh, there's that chevron ripping through these front lines. Way to go, blue. Double four stack. And then I've got a four stack. Four, three, three. There's that building on fire. That building took hella damage. My general took none. Okay, the 31st kind of came back from there, shitting down their pants, wavering. And at this point, I am trying to hit him with every single solitary cannon I have because he is starting to crumble. I take these three units and instantly put them up here. I'm just going to bypass his soldiers. These three units go straight because I have got to hit every one of these breaking units because they are going to come back and I know it. The units back here I'm not terribly afraid of because they have already broken multiple times and came back. But these five right here are what's going to give me the biggest issue. So I've got to push. I've got to push hard. And I cannot back off. And his general is just giving it all to the cause. At this point, there's not much he can do, though. Um, I've got him pretty well surrounded. And this general's brave. Here we go. Last ditch charge. One final hoorah for the Confederacy. Oh, God, that general took a beating. Jeez. Oh, my God. And he made it. General's made it so far. He is not dead. And at this point, I'm just... I'm saying hell with it. I'm pushing everything. I'm calling in my secondary defensive line. I am pushing every single solitary thing I have. And uh, I'm telling Blue this. I'm like, yeah, I'm coming to get you, Blue. I'm coming to get you. He instantly starts just targeting the blobs of men that I have with his cannons. And right here is where I know I'm screwed. I have got to take all of my units in a walking pace and full frontal charge his cannons. And I know it's going to end absolutely terribly, which is why I send every single solitary unit I have. And at this point, I am nail-biting. He's nail-biting. And he, he's telling me the whole time, my units are going to come back. My units are going to come back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them, I'm gonna give them hell. And he's right. I know his units are going to come back eventually. And right about here, I have no cannon support. And there he is. He is already chevroning because he is just hammering the shit out of my men. Look at these trails of body. Look at that hit. I tell you what, blue absolutely decimates my army with his cannons right here. And this is where he got an ass ton of free kills. And there is nothing I can do to prevent it. Nothing. At one point, I actually lumber up. I think I'm doing it right now. I'm lumbering up my 1841s. And I'm going to rush them as quick as I can to about this level. And try to start doing anti-cannon battery. I finally just took his general out. And here his troops are starting to come back. And he's going to be able to line these troops up with cannon support. 
And at this point, I'm like, oh shit, what have I gotten myself into? My 27th is already wavering. They're already tired as shit. I've got to pull them this direction to get them out of his routing troops. Oh, and that hit. Oh my god, that hit. Damn, two hits back to back. And he's laughing. He's laughing so hard. And right here I realize if I don't start peppering these men right now, I'm in trouble. So I have to stop these three regiments and open fire into his men. And we're just going to watch this for a quick second. I'm shooting right into the backs of his men. And I, at this point I told him to look real quick. All I did was intentionally made sure that these units didn't come back. And this guy broke and I do not know why. Um, it had to have been because he had no general. My 27th has came back. But right here, another chevron. More chevrons. He is canistering the ever-loving shit. No, I'm sorry. He's still round-shotting because he's ripping huge holes. Right about now, he switches to canister. And this is where I know. I am in huge trouble. Look at that. Another round shot from this one. And I know right here, I'm in massive trouble. I'm going to lose so many men. Oh my god. The, ripping through two lines. Just chevroning the hell out of his cannons. And he is not going down. And I am really starting to freak out. I have these last four full regiments that have not hardly seen combat walking and he already decimated them with cannon prior to the battle 27th just broke only hope I have is to hope these men go into his cannon and cause enough chaos and there's the canister ripping huge holes in my line another good flipping shot and I mean he is just shredding everything that I'm sending at him and I am really in panic mode at this point here before too long I take these three regiments and I run the dog shit out of them because everything I'm sending at him is breaking and at this point I'm starting to realize I have very little hope of winning and, and blue blue knew it he knew I had a snowball's chance in making this. So the first thing he's doing is targeting every single one of my regiments and firing as quick as he can. So yeah, here I am. I'm running. I am not stopping. Not right there. I'm, in, I'm initializing a charge. And he's just ripping through them all. I ran my cannons up so my cannons are already tired I had not realized that this line had stopped or I would have already went ahead and pushed them farther as you can see though I have hardly anything and all of these men are already wavering this was my only chance and I knew it if I didn't push and push hard right here I was done and there it is the 11th New York breaking prior to even getting into combat his morale dropping and coming back dropping again and coming back I, I was doomed and this cannon is just focusing down my men and my routing troops aren't doing enough and he just rips more holes through my line and this line and another hole getting ripped through my line and these guys are gonna break in any second and I am just shitting my pants I am down to my last four regiments that are fresh and right here I was crushed my heart sunk as soon as I saw that I'm like oh my god and I am doing nothing but running my troops because I know if I don't, it's over. It is absolutely over. And he is chevroning to hell and back. His men are exhausted and they are crushing my soldiers. 
I hope like hell to pop off a volley and try to break his crew, but he gets a lucky shot. Point blank range. And he actually destroyed one of his own cannons. And right here I'm like, yep, I'm done, Blue. You, you've got me. And then out of nowhere, his cannon crew broke. All because of these routing men. He crushed two-thirds of my army just trying to get to that cannon. And I was able to finally, finally breathe a sigh of relief. He was only outnumbered by two or nine hundred men, if that. And he took a decent loss. He killed, it looks to be, 36 of his own men that entire engagement. I killed a hell of a lot more of my own men. About 400 of my own men were death from friendly fire. I did not do well on that. And here's the kill count. My 1841 battery coming in with 302. My 10 pound 243. My cannons did remarkably well. Let's see the experience level. So all of my cannons are the ones that got the mad chevrons. And I'll let you guys pause to see these kills. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what we dealt with. And the entire time, I was scared shitless. So, kudos to Blue Coat. Great gameplay. I really, really enjoyed this. Thank you for playing that with me. And um, I'm going to reach out to him today and see if he wants to try to do another replay with him defending and me attacking. Because I think that would be really, really fun. And considering just how well he did, I mean, that was intense. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Hope you enjoyed the replay. If you did, make sure you hit that follow button. Jump on over to YouTube where it's Patriot Cultivator. Spelled the exact same way. No underscore, no 420, because YouTube doesn't like that. Anyway, guys, I will catch you all on the next one. Peace.